Hoffman. I'm a former IRS agent and teaching instructor. Welcome to my YouTube station. It's the home of the five minute or less video. Uh, I've worked over 10,000 cases. I worked at IRS for a decade. I've been like old as a dirt. Uh, I've been doing this for 50 years this August. So I have a whole team of former IRS agents and um, I actually have a, um, a wonderful website. I've been on the national news a number of times maybe 10 times in the last three months. You can look at some of the, my interviews and more important, my team at 777irs.com. Anyway, uh, I appreciate you listening. Today I'm doing a ser I'm actually uh, in the process of writing a book. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share each subject with you in the five minute version. Uh, this book will be uh, available soon. So I wanna talk to you today about the assessment of the tax, which is very important. I want to tell you how this process works and uh, how you uh, need to know uh, how this works because you have to understand the date and timing and all this. So um, I'm going to do this for two for practitioners. And I'm actually going to do this uh, for the taxpayer or the client. So when you actually go ahead and have a tax return and you want to file that return, let's say you uh, send that return in on April 15th. Well, whether you e-file it, or paper, it's going to take about six weeks to process by IRS. I never ever tell people ever to paper file. You only paper file if you can't e-file and tax returns that are four years or older, you cannot e-file, you can just paper file. And that is going to be a pain in the ass for you. Why? Because right now there's three million tax returns, uh, amended returns that have not been processed because of COVID. So if you're filing an amended tax return, and it's going back some period of time, you're gonna just be, pre be prepared to wait. So as a practitioner, if you're listening, if you have to file by, by paper, you better tell your client to hang in there and wait, 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 wait. Because at the end of the day, it could take a year or longer for that amended return to be filed. So that's why I encourage you e-file, because you have instant notification or gratification that that tax return has already been placed in the Internal Revenue Service. Why is that important? Well, you won't have any late fees. Everything will be properly placed by Internal Revenue Service. And more importantly, once that tax return goes into IRS, IRS creates what's called a date of assessment on your tax return. The date of assessment is important. It's You will find it if you pull an IRS transcript up with the TC150 uh, code. That will let you know that you have a date of assessment going. Why is that important? Well, if you can't pay your taxes and 10 years runs, you will beat the statute of limitations. Now, if you want to beat the statute of limitations and don't slow it up, there's things you may not want to do because it will delay the statute of limitation date. If you file an offer and compromise, you're in bankruptcy, you're in litigation, you file a collection due process, they usually last three or four months. Certain types of payment agreements all extend the statute of limitations. So just so you know, your normal uh, statute of limitations is really 10 years. I want to make sure I do everything correctly. Uh, also, if you, let's say, get audited for a year and IRS creates a transaction code of 290, or 300 on a tax return, the 10 years runs from the new 300 code. So you could have an old TC-150, the 10 years is running on that, but if IRS audits you and IRS audits and comes up, say, with another $15,000 of assessment, you have another 10 years running from that TC-300 code or the audit code. So the statute of limitations is very important because at the end of your debt, if you want to react to, should I wait out the statute or should I file an offer and compromise? That's where your tax professional makes a determination whether to contact the IRS, to sit back and wait, or to do a number number of different things. But at the end of the day, if you're in, in, in year 8, 9, uh, or by 10, or 7, 8, 9, and 10, you may want to do nothing and wait out the statute of limitations. That's how the IRS statute of limitations and the date of assessment work. Remember, you have 10 years from the date of assessment. You have to go on your IRS transcript to find out what your date of assessment is. Thank you very much. I appreciate you listening. How about giving me a subscription? I give you everything I got. The more subscriptions I get, I kind of move up on the YouTube platform. I would appreciate it. Thank you.